You carry a Githyanki relic. I will have an explanation. Or your head. Walk away. Now. I won't warn you again. That artifact is an heirloom of my people. Likely she spilled Githyanki blood in order to steal it. This cannot stand! Heirloom? Plunder from some conquered realm, more like. This artifact is the only thing keeping us from becoming slaves to our parasites. Be glad I have it. Lazelle thinks I have something important to her people. She's deluded, clear. Lies! She carries an heirloom of my people. I must know why. Incorrect. Judicious bloodletting settles feuds and roots out the weak, the deceitful. Do you hear this, tribe? Our lives are at stake, and she wants us to turn on each other. No others. Just you and me. The bad blood must be purged. A jewel come first light. You mean I'd get to prove you wrong and thrash you? I love it. Get some rest, Lazelle. You'll need it. You had every chance to look the other way. But here we are. You chose this. Spare me the justifications, coward! If anyone asks, I'll say you were transforming. Don't expect to be mourned. a liability. It's the artifact we need, not her. Let me up, and I'll show you. Can I do that, Lazel? Can I turn my back on you? Never. Thieves aren't afforded such luxury. Loosen the grip on your pride for one blasted moment, won't you? We needn't be enemies. Plenty of those to go around already. What would you have? That we be friends? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. But imagine what we might achieve if we channeled some of that hostility back at our real foes, instead of each other. They wouldn't stand a chance. There's something I want to talk to you about. Something important. I could have died in that pod, back on the Nautiloid. You could have died, spending precious moments trying to free me, but you did it anyway. I owe you my life. Twice over, in fact. You supported me against Lazel. I may not have survived that night without you. I'm trying to say that you've earned my trust in a way very few ever have. I want that to mean something. I want you to know more about me, at least from what I can remember. As long as I've prayed to Lady Shah, I've wished to serve her as a dark justicia. There is scarcely a greater way to fully dedicate yourself to Lady Shah, save perhaps if you become the head of her church. To become a Dark Justicia is to become the Night Singer's sword arm. 
Her implement with which she will cast down the unbelievers and win the final battle to restore her perfect, endless darkness. It's all I ever wanted. I prayed it was my calling. But Mother forbid me from seeking to prove myself worthy of the rank. She said I was not ready. Not my mother, Mother, I should add. The Mother Superior, head of Lady Shah's enclave in Baldur's Gate. Sometimes I wonder if she would ever deem me ready. I owe her everything, and I only wish to serve, yet she can prove... inscrutable. I don't know. Perhaps if I succeed in my mission and reach Baldur's Gate... Hope has little place amongst Lady Shah's children. It's an illusion. A distraction. But for this... I hope my time will yet come. We aren't dear friends now, if that's what you're asking. But I trust we can all sleep a little more soundly in camp now. Well, apart from you, of course. You have an interesting definition of friendly, but yes. It is over where I am concerned. I said we no longer quarreled. I have not said we must trust her. Watch her with keen eyes. One wrong move, and we act. It is a certainty. I had assumed our parasites served a Gaith Elder, but I believe they serve a greater master still. A question that burns in my belly day and night. Elders and collectives abide by their own tenets. It would require a powerful creed to unite them. And now this voice, this Creed finds our own ears. If it reaches this plane, it may reach others. Always at your side. I'll say one thing for our troop. We're not short on drama. I'm glad Shadowheart and Lazel settled their differences peacefully. Eventually. I really thought Shadowheart and Lazel might fight to the death over that artifact. A pity. It would have made for a fine night's entertainment. Who knows? Drow? Mind flayers? Death? Hopefully not ours. But maybe answers. If we can convince the right people to talk.
How fares the search? Please let this work. Mm. The weight of it and that blaze of chaos. Can't imagine this where my heart should be. Must be quite the experience. Give me just a moment. And I think... There. You'll have to install it, I'm afraid. I don't think there are thick enough gloves in all the realms to protect from that kind of heat. That feels... good. I'm still burning hot as hell's hole, but I feel less... changeable. Cheers, mate. Pleasure. And as for the heat, I haven't got any solutions now, but I'm not giving up. Could be if the combustion chamber had its own insulation, or if we had some kind of enchanted coolant. Find me again in Baldur's Gate. If I'm worth my salt, I'll have figured something out by then. Take care, Karlak. And hopefully the next time I see you, I'll have something promising to report. Pocket any infernal iron you find along the way, hmm? Druids. Who uses wooden tools? Is that everything? Damon's upgrade didn't cool me down, but it did juice me up. I don't think I've ever felt more powerful. Sooner rather than later would be good. I feel like I'm burning serious fuel. Oh, fuck yes. I'm ready to burn all night. Speaking of, I could eat a giant badger. Is it almost time for dinner? My condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. Thank you. has any effect. Oh, Mr. have mercy on us all. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. I'm what one might call a wizard prodigy who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it. Much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the Mother of Magic herself. The Lady of Mysteries. The Goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time, she became my muse. And later, even my lover. Oh, yes. We enjoyed each other's company. Body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. I swore my ambition was only to serve her better. But she only smiled and told me to be contented. Inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess. 
Yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. And he almost managed, but not quite. And his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal. Roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured, then shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms. Until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought. Until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book. A netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? You know me. My gestures can never be grand enough. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in, into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound, then suddenly opened. Inside there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. What is it? What do you see? Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. Rather worse, actually. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it would level a city the size of Waterdeep. We might chance upon a king's collection of magical artifacts around the corner. We might cross paths with a miracle round the bend. Then again, we might not. All of this. It must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. That is... a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best 
not to let you down. I stand at a precipice, but if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now, even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. Be shy. I'm nothing. out. Tormented!
Got it. Still breathing, despite everything. There's a parasite in that corpse, brimming with potent magic. Corpse regards you lifelessly. Squid, sheep, fugitives, needs. Absolute binds, obedience. Corpse rises, your parasite squirms in recognition. The tadpole stirs. It recognizes its master. There's no doubt this creature is responsible for your parasite, and it's waiting for your questions. Dark, empty pods flicker across your vision. They demand new flesh. You see the tadpole in the Mind Flayer's hand. Not a parasite. Perfection. Rebirth is sloughing flesh. A new skull housing cold, sharp intellect. You see dark tunnels lit by noxious pools of brine. The darkness spreads through the earth. The sky splits open and nautiloids pour out of a void that consumes the stars. Fractured images fill your mind. Curved drow blades, crude goblin torches, null teeth dripping blood. You see other mind flayers arranged in a serene circle. Absolute unity. Absolute power. You see Draw Ragslin writhe. A tadpole clings to the Mind Flayer's fingers. The Goblin King bows, obedient. The flesh of his tribe becomes the flesh of the Absolute. The Mind Flayer's corpse twitches, then collapses again. It will speak no more. The Ringleaders have to die. The very natural order of things is in danger, thanks to them. You did it! You actually did it! The leader's dead! Oh, praise Sylvanus! No, that's not right. Praise you, my friend. The Grove owes you a debt beyond measure. 
Killing's never my first choice. But those three were too dangerous to leave alive. And you'll receive it soon enough. Return to the Grove. I'll make my own way there. I can see to some matters there, and we can discuss what comes next amidst more bucolic surroundings than here. That orb seems powerful. What can it do once it's extracted? Nothing good can come of it unless it is contained. Why? It might be useful. Who knows? Grab your bags. We're moving. But to be sure, we need every last copper piece to get started in Baldur's Gate. A scout just reported. The goblin's leadership has been decimated. We might escape this place yet, and I hear you are the one to thank. I'm grateful. I took a collection from all of us. It isn't much, but you've earned it. Very good of you. Thank you. Halsin will likely want to thank you too, mind. He returned just a while ago. I believe he's catching up with Corker. As for us... No armies at our heels. Amazing. We can finally leave. But perhaps we need not speak of farewells. We'll join your camp tonight to celebrate if you'll have us. I knew this would come right if we just stayed positive. Not that your blade didn't help, too. Gods, it seems we might actually make it to the city now. Hope the neighbors are a bit more welcoming. It smells bad out here. I want to go home. I won't. I left my sword in the cave. Don't tell, but I don't want to touch it again. I'm glad you killed all the goblins. I hope you made them scared. Hold still. I should speak up. I'll kiss you. Heldrell didn't want us. And those druids sure as hell didn't either. But you... You risked your life for us. Yes, Mum? You do good work. If you can handle more than goblins, might be I'll have use of you in Baldur's Gate. I'm glad you didn't die. No discounts once I'm running the wider Baldur's Gate, mind. I hate you. You killed all the goblins, and now we can't practice swords anymore! We actually did it! We did. I'm glad you came through it alive. We owe you more than we can repay. I wasn't there to help. You took care of the goblins. Nice work. I'd have put good coin on you running off into the sunset, but you did it. You stopped the goblins. Thank you. With the goblins dead, we might actually make it to Baldur's Gate. You've solved one problem for us. Guess it's on us to solve the next. You killed the goblins. Hope you made them suffer. We did it. We actually did it! Something we did. Here lies Cannon. He gave his life defending others. One sorrow ended, the next soon to begin. We didn't die today. Tomorrow, perhaps, but not today. Thanks to you. Boulder's Gate, we're coming. Glad to see some goblin blood spilled for a change. We're sick of running from those rats. I nearly dispatched those goblins myself, but it seems you managed well enough. 
And why wield a masterwork where a butcher's blade will do? My thanks, truly. It was you, right? Who took care of the goblins? I knew you were a good one. Big city, lots of opportunity. We couldn't have held them back on our own. Thank you. Back to worrying about road rations it is. So many mouths to feed, but, well, that's not a bad problem to have. Thank you, truly. So it's true. You scattered the goblins. Peace can finally return to this corner of the Sword Coast. Thank you. As am I. And I'm sure those poor refugees would quite agree. You took it upon yourself to undertake the right of thorns. I ought to exile you from this place. Forever. Instead, I shall listen to the explanation that you owe me. An error, most grave master. I beg your grace. Grace is bestowed by nature, not me. You will stay as a novice anew. You have forgotten the ways of the druids, the natural order of things. It is up to you to prove the lessons have been learned once more. So as you say, and so it is done, master. She shows great insolence, but time will humble her, and the Grove still needs her. You will soon see why, but enough of that for now. I owe you my thanks. The Grove stands, nature prevails, and again I am in your debt. Speak to Wrath, he will reward you for your efforts. The journey to Moonrise Towers, and all the dangers that that entails. But that's tomorrow's problem. Take some time for yourself tonight. Rest, celebrate. Come morning, I'll be by your side. Healing can begin. Do not forget who invited those shadows. You have much to learn still. I'm concentrating. Does this look good? Is the coin in the middle? Yes. Yes, you're right. That's it. You did this grove a great favor. And now leave the rest to us. I think it's high time you all left. Our sacred grove has sheltered you enough. Within the inner sanctum, of course. It is not for us to fight your battles. Make it quick. You're disrupting the harmony of this holy place. Uh, Master Halson's past his prime. It might be time for another. I'm no fan of those devils either, but they're leaving. If it had been up to Korga, they would never have been here at all. You've done it. You brought House in back. Thank you. No, thanks is not enough. May Sylvanus bless you for all your days. I cannot imagine taking on a camp full of goblins was a simple task. As am I. The Grove will be whole again. And I promised you a reward, didn't I? Let me show you on your map where you can find the cache. Take this rune. You'll need it. Place it among the pedestals inside our library. When the wolf glows brightest, everything in the vault below will be yours. With the leadership dead, no attack will be mounted on the Grove. I am in your debt, my friend. We're ready to head to your camp. 
Are you? Excellent. Lead the way. Patience? Have you no respect for showmanship? Having performance issues, Roland. Hush you. And... Behold! Adoring applause? You're too kind. Remember when he could barely cast that? They grow up so fast. Never have I met such troglodytes. Now, pass the wine. Are Roland and Leah actually getting along? I know you cut down a horde of goblins, but this is far more impressive. Look at them. How happy they are. We did that. Yeah. Don't tell Roland, but his magic show might be the highlight. He's been doing them since we were little. He'll make it big in Baldur's Gate. I know it. Think of it. No more caves, no more tents, no more running away. We'll be in a city with roads and markets and homes. Your mugs are sour as... Look at them all. Guzzling poison like we've the right to be happy. Hmm. Perhaps it'll make the evening more tolerable. <sighs> this party's a bit more bearable, thanks to that pint. Hearts a-quiver. We raised our bows. <sighs> None of that poetic stuff. Something like goblins swarmed, but we were brave and fried them all with a... Fate spins along as it should. Dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps a resurrection instead? Yeah, else. I was hoping you wouldn't notice I was gone. No. I'm deeply proud of you. A touch less so of myself. In truth, I don't feel in a festive mood, and I didn't want to cast a grey cloud over the night. I'm a devil. I love the people from the grove, but I unsettle them deep down, as I seem to unsettle everyone nowadays. You don't want a devil at your party. Claws will pop the balloons, you see. And the sweet cakes don't taste half as good as raw eggs with this blasted forked tongue. If only half the world had half the heart you do. But off with you. This is your day. Have a dance. Enjoy the music. Some time alone beneath the stars and I'll be back to my old self. Promise. Still, it's a night to remember. You've made sure of that. I like these people. They're joyful. It's contagious. Would you look at this place? All these people, happy because of us. 
it's nice to be somewhere where good is still possible. And with good potations, too. Fuck yes. I'm celebrating my freedom and our friendship and these folks' bright future besides. All I need now is a fire-retardant lover to get lost in till sunrise. Not so much. You spend the whole time avoiding swords and schemes. Plus, people just get nastier as the night wears on. I tried to make friends at first. Learned my lesson fast. Better to keep to yourself in hell. You too, soldier. Enjoy yourself tonight. You've earned it. Everyone seems to be in high spirits. Strange. You know who I never thought I'd find myself caring for? Exactly right. Never gave them much thought. Certainly not that bunch in the grove. Yet we came through for them. We saved their lives. Odd. That's more easily said by some than others. But nobody's here to debate right from wrong. Share a bottle with me? We should wait a little while. Until the others have drifted off. Not tonight. You know, I never pictured myself as a hero. Never thought I'd be the one they'd toast for saving so many lives. And now that I'm here... I hate it. This is awful. True. That was fun. Still... I would have liked more for my trouble than a pat on their head and vinegar for wine. It's easy for some. You and Shadowheart seem to have a connection. It looks very sweet. Not what I call passionate or interesting, but sweet. I'm sure it'll be adequate. But you go ahead. Have fun. Hope you're enjoying the night, hero. I certainly am. Cheers to many more like this. I have seen the Kithraki tear a screaming Neogi's legs from its belly to fashion into blades, yet they could not match your nerve today. It was enough to drive me to madness. A pity for us you have promised your knight to the half-elf. I've no doubt you will satisfy your tastes for endless conversation. Vlacketh demands of me no less. Hmm. If only I might lay claim to my proper trophy. Come morning, you will wonder. You will wonder how my lips might have tasted. How my fingers on your skin might have felt. Oh, but do enjoy yourself this night. I intend to myself. Astarian looks particularly tempting. You have no idea how good it feels to see these people smiling. The singing we could probably do without, but even so, thank you. Make it spicy. Go on, do your rounds. 
But if they hand you something purple, don't drink it. I think they got into Ethel's potions. Goblins swarmed, but we were brave and fried them all with a thunder wave. You came through for us. That's a change from most adults I know. Watching a bunch of old folks get dumber by the dram for. And when they run dry, I've got a few bottles tucked away to keep things flowing. For a price, of course. Aha! There you are! Come now, settle in. I do hope you have partaken of something bracing. This may well take us all night. But I am engaged in celebration of the purest form. Commemoration. If we are to write your legend in the stars, then we must first give you a name. That ballad was but a crude preview, a frame without its crowning jewel. Your nom de guerre. Something iconic, but not too much of a mouthful. We don't want to exclude the common folk, after all. I intend this tale to enrapture all. Far too much? This is the very problem. If you could set aside your many triumphs, carry out one defining act, not to belittle your achievements to date, of course, but besting a dragon, a giant, a god, perhaps? Hmm. I must deliberate. Go, enjoy your evening. I shall have work for you in the days to come. This might be the wine talking, but I'm feeling inspired. Thinking of writing my next song about you. But I need an angle. Any ideas? Pfft. The gods have enough people singing about them. But fine, I'll do my best. Your song was coming along. Then things began spinning. Worry not, I shall return to it at first light. Away and have your fun. I have a myth to make. Beautiful night, don't you think? Nothing like a brush with destruction to make one appreciate the majesty of a celestial canvas. It's a view I would once have shared with my companion. Though definitely unaccompanied by such revelry. She preferred it when we were alone. Curled up before a crackling hearth with some... Ancient, esoteric tome between us. Ink glinting in the firelight. <laughs> oh, not everyone is comfortable being alone with their thoughts. Though I never felt alone with a book in my hand. Or with her for company. I speak of Tara, my Tressen, assistant, my constant companion through all the ills and tribulations my hubris has thrust upon me. She'd be most impressed by our efforts saving these tieflings. Proud, even. And I've given her little to be proud of recently, after I was afflicted with my condition. I locked myself in my tower for an entire year. It was inconsolable. Wallowing in my self-inflicted tragedy. I've given up on myself. But Tara never did. It was her encouragement, her research that led me to my treatment. Once we knew that magically infused items were the key, she went out to find them for me. She saved my life. After so long being cared for by someone else, it feels good to have repaid the favor. Not directly to Tara, but to these poor tieflings. I'm sure she would approve. Smart does her a disservice. She's a fine wizard in her own right, though somewhat held back by her lack of opposable thumbs. 
You remind me of her somewhat. There's a steeliness in you. An unwavering tenacity, even in the face of, to be frank, quite dire odds. Wish she were here for me to make a formal introduction. But I would never ask her to undertake such a journey. She's safer at home. Besides, she was always telling me I needed to spread my wings, so to speak. Find mortal friends instead of hanging onto Mistress coattails. So that's what I'm doing. I hope. Oh, she'll love you. So long as you don't rub her belly. She hates it when anyone does that. The pleasures I experienced in Mistress Embrace go far beyond the thrill of having one's tummy tickled. <laughs> I remember once she took the smallest piece of the weave and made it into... Wait, are you saying... You know what? I think I've clearly had far too much white. <laughs> and you've had nowhere near enough. I think this is a conversation best held back on. For now. With my condition as volatile as it is, I fear any undue... Excitement may tip it over the edge, so to speak. Go, indulge in the frivolities. They're good for the heart. And mine will be all the lighter to see you enjoying yourself. Go on now, don't waste a night like this talking to me. We'll have plenty of time together on the way to Moonrise. In truth, I... Rarely imbibe. The stuff goes right to my head. Before you know it, I'd be breaking into song or declaring love to the first person I laid eyes on. <sighs> then you have never heard me singing, which makes you very fortunate. Hmm, I'm sure there are. You strike me as extremely... resourceful. But there are many grateful people here who want to spend time with you. I must not keep you all to myself. As enjoyable as that may be. Go on, enjoy yourself. Seek out some wine before it runs dry. There are a lot of thirsty people around here. Um... Enjoy yourself tonight. Come morning, we've got a hard road ahead of us. What happened? The buzz of celebration quiets to a soothing hum as you approach your bunk. Though you seek repose, you needn't spend the night alone. There is one who yearns for you in the dark. Who will you seek? You sleep alone, uplifted by memories of your recent triumphs. I trust you enjoyed your evening. After all your efforts, it was well deserved. It may be some time before you're afforded another such night. There is much to be done. Moonrise Towers beckons. I've told you all I know, and now I'll join your camp to help you face whatever's to come. With luck and the Oak Father's blessings, we might actually survive. Are you ready? Onward then. We'll speak soon, I'm sure. Oak Father's blessings to you.
There are few things that are too strong for me. And cast those regrets aside. You did not get caught up in the moment. You seized it. In other circumstances, I would have done the same. Perhaps. But best to not dwell on nights past. There are plenty more yet to come. Hopefully. I've chosen a successor as first druid, Francesca of the High Forest. I sent a bird to summon her. Precisely. Who indeed? You do not know, and neither do any of the others. The Grove needs to move beyond the mistakes of the past. What it needs is an unknown quantity. An outsider who can enforce the Oak Father's teachings without bias. This is why I chose Francesca. She will restore simplicity and purity to the Grove in my absence. Contrary to how some think of us, we druids can play politics when necessary. I studied one up close. Closer than most would care to be to those things. A drow attacked me and I defended myself. Afterwards, I was able to examine the tadpole that emerged. Hideous, but fascinating. Like nothing else in nature, I'm glad to say. Precisely. Then perhaps I could have done something. About both the Shadow Curse and Ceramorphosis aberrations. But, in my eagerness, I put far too much faith in the abilities of Aradin and his band. We didn't even get close. Precious little. But I'm quite certain it can still be found. It's had the whole region around Moonrise Towers in a chokehold of darkness and despair for years now. Those who remained are shadow cursed. If you don't die at their hands, then you become one of them. We have to get to Moonrise. But the less time we spend in its blighted surrounds, the better. Well, there's hardly anyone left to share the responsibility with. Few who witnessed the fall of Moonrise still draw breath. What Ketherick Thorm unleashed is not something that nature can undo by itself. I must do what I can. I studied the Shadow Curse for years, but to truly understand it and stop it, I must reach its source. Perhaps, but we'll need to get closer before I can put my theory into practice. Put it from your mind for now. Once we near the curse, then there will be more to be said. Miss it? <laughs> oh dear, no. It's a terrible burden. Takes you away from nature, and forces you to deal with others' problems and personalities. Be wary of anyone who actually wants such a role, I say. Likely they don't understand it, or they have ill intent. I'm just glad to be out here amidst the Oak Father's creations. With such stimulating company? <laughs> Never better. <laughs> Nothing like a little camp drama to spice up the evening. <laughs> it's almost a pity things ended so amicably. Seeing those two duke it out would be fun. I won't lie. It's tempting. If I keep the tadpole, I risk transforming into a grotesque monster. If I lose the tadpole, Cazador has control of me, body and soul, and I return to the shadows. It's grim either way, so why not sell what's left of my soul to a devil? Better he has it 
than Casador. I'm glad to hear it. Whatever's coming, we need to keep our options open. 